Welcome, folks, to the second episode of Startup Difficulties. Today we are going to take a look at Imperium Galactica. It's also a game that a lot of people actually wrote about to me, so they're saying, oh, I can't run it, I don't know how to, and um, yeah, it just doesn't start up. I say, okay, you know what? Since so many people ask about it, let's make a video about it, because that is telling people a little bit more about how I actually set this up, instead of just writing them the whole wall of text all the time. So, basically what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to show you what tool I use to actually run this game, and what you need to do in order to get it to work. However, I'm telling you this before I'm going to start off the actual process, the tool I'm using and the settings I use are very dependent on your own computer. If you do not know if the application is running at the settings I use, then you are best beware about what settings you set in the options of the tool. So, first of all, we're going to tell you about a tool, which probably a lot of people actually know about, but maybe they just don't know how to operate it. So that's something you might have picked up from websites and guides and whatnot, but you should definitely be careful with this tool because it's very, very computer heavy. So just beware, it's an emulator for DOS. So first off, we're going to look for the emulator I was talking about. And this is DOSBox. DOSBox is a very good DOS emulator and is very, very well known at the moment. Also because there is another website selling games at the moment which is actually using um, games in combination with DOSBox. Also Steam is using that at this point sometimes, for example for the old XCOM series. They're including it with a runnable version of DOSBox. Um, so you should look out for that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go to Downloads, go to the Windows version, wait for the link to appear, and save it anywhere we want. Like for example on a desktop. Then close this up. Well, actually I'm just going to show you something. Um, since we're here, let's look at the compatibility tab. You can here navigate through the games that are supported by DOSBox, if they're supported well or if they're just not really that much. So you can view the games you want to play um, here and you can see if they're actually working on DOSBox. Imperium Galactica for example, I'm not even sure if it's listed. Yeah, uh, it says playable. For me personally, I think it's more than playable, but um, it's more of a kind of a, well, just try it out and see what happens thingy, more or less. So, yeah, this should work out pretty nicely. So, we want to install DOSBox. I'm not going to install it on my computer again because I have it already, but I'm going to walk you through uh, some specific things here. Um, that is fine. So you want it to be installed at this directory unless you have your Windows folder or uh, your Windows partition on another uh, drive letter. Basically you want to install it in the standard directory which I'm going to open just in a minute. So if you have it installed or will install it in a different folder then you should definitely navigate to that folder and do what I'm going to do in just a second. So install it and that should be it. Right. Now let's navigate to our DOSBox folder and open up the options. Right. So basically this huge file of text here is the configuration of DOSBox. There is something you should know that I have done for myself, which is basically the resolution stuff. I've set it to 960 to 720 because I want to have it in 720 um, because the the um, the videos that are played inside 
Imperium Galactica are 960 times 600 so I can basically change the resolution according to my set resolution uh, without having too much trouble um, compressing them. But you can set any resolution you want up to the maximum of your screen supporting. So basically you can have like 1280 to 1024 that is a possible resolution that you might have maybe if you're using all four to three resolution monitors or you can use one uh, uh, 1680 to 1050 which is a standard for uh, 16 to 10 monitors or 1920 to 1080 which is the standard resolution for 16 to 9 monitors so you can choose that whatever you want I'm using output uh, OpenGL mode this might not be supported for every possible um, system of yours but OpenGL runs the smoothest in my opinion without causing too much overhead on my computer the rest I leave as it is. That is the resolution for your window that will appear later. The next one, like here, the DOSBox stuff, I leave that as it is. You don't need to change anything here. Now, the render settings I normally don't touch either because I don't need to use any of this. But now the most difficult part comes because most of the time people do not know how to operate this properly. So basically what you can do here is the following. You can set your emulated core and CPU type to anything you would like up here. Auto, dynamic, normal, simple or auto, threes, whatever, these things. So basically what we want to have at this point which sometimes does cause crashes, I'm, I'm saying that right out now. If you set that to dynamic, um, it can cause problems. So basically what you want to do is you want to set both of these things to auto, so core auto, CPU type auto, which absolutely is fine. But now to the main setting here, the cycles. Cycles depend on your computer. The better your computer is, the more cycles it can actually render or use on your computer. So set it to a lower value will slow down the game but will use less resources on your PC. I'm using about 70,000 cycles which is basically a speed that I can work with at the moment in Imperium Galactic. I probably could set it higher but I have other applications in the background running for example fraps that will also drain quite a lot of power on my PC so I set it to 70,000 70, uh, which is a good number I would suppose for my own computer however I would definitely recommend if you don't have that good of a computer to not set it up to 70,000 that can really hurt you. So I would say that the basic startup value for this is about 30,000 cycles and then just try to increase it step by step and see how your computer is faring. If it's crashing you best know that you shouldn't have that high of a number. For example if you have a hundred thousand and it crashes instantly you do know exactly that your computer cannot handle that. So personally I would set it to like I don't know um, 30,000, uh, yeah, 30,000 indeed, yes. And then just go up from that um, step by step. There is a key combination that lets you increase or decrease these cycles, which is Control F10 and Control F12. F10 is decreasing and F12 is increasing. So we want to have a fixed number here about 500 seems to be a good way of going up and down a little bit seeing if it's working all right or not so if you press control F12 inside DOSBox it will go up to 70,500 and then 71,000 and so on and the other way around for F12 if you press it you go down to 69,500 or 69,000 if you press a second time 
So you can also do that step by step, which is very important in this case because, as I said, DOSBox is using quite a lot of computer resources. Also important to know is a fixed ratio here because it could potentially cause problems if you set it to auto, like it suggests here you could use it auto, but uh, as it says it usually works but can fail for certain games. For example for me in Imperium Galactic it fails, it just crashes with a memory error, so that is something you should note. If you can work it with auto, that's absolutely okay. Your computer will then use the best possible setting for you at a specific time. So it will select the cycles and the best speed setting on its own, but can cause problems if you have more than one application running at the same time, which I have, for example. And that would crash my game. With yours, it might not be. But you have to try it out in yourself. Recommending 30,000, uh, 30, and the more you want, just try it out. Right, next up is the sound or mixer settings. I normally don't do anything here because I think it's okay as it is. Um, I believe that 44100 is the standard setting, I'm not sure if that is, but if it isn't, just set it to 44100 and that should be more than enough. MIDI sound settings I have never modified at all. Sound blaster settings I keep the same. You should definitely note the numbers here for your Imperium Galactica setup, which normally means that you have 20, uh, 220 of a base number, IRQ7 and DMA1. But for the sound setting itself in Imperium Galactica, important is this number, this number, and not the DMA mode, but the HDMI mode, which would be the 5. So you should note these numbers down. If you have problems setting up the sound in IG, then you could just look at these numbers and see if everything's working out. I don't change the GUS stuff because I don't need to, nor do I cheat, uh, cheat no, change the speaker settings. Not really needed at all. Uh, joystick, I don't have a joystick, I don't use it, but maybe at some point it might be a valid thing to change, but for Imperium Galactica there is no need to change this. Neither is the serial stuff and neither is the DOS stuff. Now we come down here to the auto exec part. Auto exec is the following. Once you start up DOSBox, several things will be done at startup. In this case it means that it mounts as a C drive in DOSBox my D drive so that means this is the letter you want to use in DOSBox and this is the letter you map to it from your own Windows system. That means D, your hard drive D, will be mounted as C in DOSBox and my J drive, which includes my CD-ROM, that is why I have minus T CD-ROM, meaning type CD-ROM, will be mounted as drive D in DOSBox. And then I just change to drive C, C doubled on, like you would do that in the normal DOS operating system. Now this is the theory and I just want to see if there's anything I want to show you. There might be something I've forgotten but I don't think I have. Let me see. Is there anything here? No, I don't believe that. No, that's all I wanted to show you. So that is the configuration of DOSBox itself. Now let's open up DOSBox, shall we? It might lag a little bit, I'm telling you that already. I have to wait a little bit between things that I want to input into DOSBox because otherwise this will not work out properly. So this is the screen you will get when you start up DOSBox for the first time. Basically you will have the Z drive here and that's it. You, you don't see anything else. Then what you want to do is you want to mount your hard drive letter or directory. I, I really like the 
hard drive letter itself and not just the directory because that will let you navigate between different folders a little bit more easily if you have different doll games that you want to play. So I mount my D drive as C. That means, as it says, drive C is mounted as local directory D. As I explained, D is your local hard drive letter and C is your drive letter that you will then be able to use in DOSBox. The next one is this, which means as type CD-ROM, there's the MSC DAX install, blah, 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 and drive D is mounted as type CD-ROM from the uh, drive letter J. So your CD that is inserted in drive J in this case, or E on your PC, for example, will then be used as a CD-ROM drive inside DOSBox. So you can also navigate around on this CD, but you don't need to. It's just there to be able for the game to just load stuff from the CD. That's what we want in this case. And then C double dot will just navigate you to your own Imperium Galactica folder. Now, you can type in stuff here, whatever you want. But we want to navigate to our Imperium Galactica folder. And since I've named the folder Imperium, I just type in im. And then you can press tab. Because that will autocomplete, like on a Linux system, your own um, folder names. So we change directory, that means cd, change directory to Imperium. You need to, of course, be on the drive that contains your Imperium Galactica folder. And this will change our directory to the Imperium folder. Now you can navigate around here but using dir, which just basically means show me the contents of the directory I'm currently in, which would be this. There's a lot of stuff. If you don't have operated on DOS specifically before, you would probably not even recognize any of this. But just to know that you can actually show this, um, you need to navigate your Imperium executable. That's why I have shown this, because I want you to see that there is Imperium executable here. But before we start that, we're going to go to the install executable, because we want to be able to set the sound. I'm just going to show you that quickly. If you've installed the game properly, you will then see this. Oh, no, you actually, you, when you want to install the game, you will see this screen here, where you can auto-detect your sound card. Yeah, 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 it will try to auto-detect your sound card and then says, okay, your sound card is a Sound Blaster 16, a base address of 2200, uh, 220, your IQ of 7, and the HDMA uh, setting of 5. This is why I said you should use that HDMA of 5 instead of the 1 that we saw. And then you can just test your sound guard. Sound test. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, it's probably lagging a little bit on the sound test, but that is just because I'm recording not just DOSBox, but everything. I'm now going to do not save. Normally you want to save and exit, but I do not want to save any of this. So back to our Imperium folder. Let's do dir again. And then just press Imperium or navigate Imperium. So just type I am tab bam and press enter. And then you are whoops, I didn't want to do that. Goodbye. Yeah, that that was my mistake. I didn't want to click on any of the buttons. So basically you want to just load this up like this, set your settings correctly in DOSBox, and that's about it. DOSBox is a very handy tool with this. And when you're done in DOSBox, just press exit, or type exit, and press enter. That will close everything that you need. So, this is how we run Imperium Galactica on a modern computer. I hope I could show you this properly. If there's any questions, of course, just post them down in the comments and I will respond to them as soon as I've got time. I do read all of my comments on the videos. That's something I definitely do. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd say, just post them. So I hope this helped you. And if there's any interest in other games, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. 
So, I will see you guys next time.